Hello everyone, happy new week. Marcus here and Chris. Hello. We're gonna play you guys a tune. This one is for our good mate, mine and Chris's Rob. Um, he's a fantastic gent, he's from uh, Canada, just like me. And I wrote the lyrics for the song with uh, Daria, uh, Daria Lands. And uh, we wrote this for him for his birthday. And now it's just become a song that we just play regularly. And uh, play with the band with Chris, and uh, we'll play it for you now. We were noon down from across the pond. Went to the pub, got up and played a song. We met a man, he came bounding along. He said, Hi, my name is Rob. We didn't know it then, but he's a special guy. Always the first to ask a drink. It's not the first and last, he's got every single glass And he won't ever let you buy one back Cause he's a great bit of brilliant man with a low sexy voice He's a talented musician, he's everyone's first choice He's this young playing frisbee mark games when it breaks He's got a heart of gold, he's the best Canadian you'll ever know To power tools to practice in his house. He'll drive you from gig to gig or you from coast to coast. He'll never say that you're the one who owns. Then what is life online for his closest friends? Picketing and protesting, marching without rest. He'll keep us safe and sound with a roof over our heads. He's the best big brother that we've ever had. Cause he's a great man, a burly man with a little sexy voice. He's a talented musician, he's everyone's first choice Stay young playing frisbee more games when it rains He's got a heart of gold, he's the best Canadian you'll ever know Cause he's a great native burly man with a look sexy voice He's a talented musician, he's everyone's first choice Stay young playing frisbee more games when it rains He's got a heart of gold, he's the best Canadian you'll ever know Is that I read uh, quite a bit, uh, whether traveling or at home, um, just kind of all over, whenever, whenever I can, whenever I find a book that I, I really enjoy. Um, so I just thought I'd share some of the books that I have read um, in the last while with you. Um, so starting off here, this is a total classic, some of you probably already read this, is Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. Fantastic book, I got this from a uh, kind of a book swap thing um, that was in uh, Stratford, which actually uh, was a whole shop. It was fantastic. Another book that I'll show you um, from that same shop was this book called The Guns of Navarone, which is uh, also a classic. This is a war wartime novel, um, but it uh, excellent, excellent book. Very well written and very, really, uh, really enjoyable. Um, so those I got from the book swap. There's uh, all kinds of these uh, all over the town all over London, um, but uh, that one specifically where I got these two books is gone now. Um, also another one that I've read is uh, this one that I borrowed from my from good friend Micah called Factfulness, um, about how the world is better, better than we think it is at the moment. Uh, we were very bogged down with a lot of uh, a lot of negativity in that, and this isn't like, um, you know, it's not uh, all rainbows and things like that. It, it understands that there are things, because there's lots of bad things wrong with the world right now, um, but it's actually better than we think it is. Um, so that one's that one's excellent um, as well. And it's uh, and they use a lot of statistics and that from the UN and uh, from a lot of other uh, places. Fantastic, fantastic book. Um, thanks, thanks for that. Um, also, I uh, very different uh, in this one. I read the entire Harry Potter series which was really cool for the first time. Um, it was brilliant, and I loved that. And everyone probably knows about Harry Potter. 
Um, and this one was super cool. I just bought it because I liked the title um, and the idea of it. It's called The Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out a Window and Disappeared. Um, this is by uh, Jonas Jonasson. Um, and it was a really cool book. It was, it was great. Literally, that's what it's about. An old man climbs out his window at his uh, care home and he disappears and goes on this uh, crazy adventure. And it was fantastic. And a couple of the other ones, I don't have them with me anymore because I've lent them I've lent them to people. The biggest one, probably my favorite book, maybe my favorite book of all time, is called Jitterbug Perfume by Tom Robbins. And uh, I'll put a little thing there so you can see it. Jitterbug Perfume is about a lot of things, about uh, immortality and perfumes and um, like uh, ancient pagan gods and all kinds of crazy things but it's a fantastic book um it's really well written um and uh it's by tom robbins the, and the other one is uh, player of games by ian m banks it's uh, more of a sci-fi uh book which is really fantastic and the last book um this one is called being mortal uh by a tool govande and uh fantastic book it's called the whole title is being mortal uh, medicine and what matters in the end. Um, I do have this uh, love for the idea of immortality and mortality and just the uh, the things that come along with them. And uh, yeah, it was an interesting book and it was uh, a lot of it's very just like factfulness. A lot of it is very fact-based and lots of research go into, into it. Um, but uh, it was a fantastic read. Um, so I recommend all these all these books. I've read some other books too that I haven't really um, enjoyed quite as much, and I um, I am not talking about them here. But um, I hope that uh, you read some of these. I hope you enjoy them. And um, now I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a reading from this other book that I got that I found at a train station one time, um, in uh, like a book swap kind of thing as well. And it is folklore myths and legends of Britain. And this first story is called A Tale of Two Heads. There is, for instance, the story of Dr. Anne Ross, the eminent Celtic scholar and archaeologist and major contributor to this book. Dr. Ross does research work for a number of museums, and late in 1971 she was asked to examine two carved stone heads which had been discovered near Hadrian's Wall. What happened next is best told, in her own words. Though there was nothing unpleasant about the appearance of the heads, I took an immediate instinctive dislike to them. I left them in the box they had been sent in and put it in my study. I planned to have them geologically analyzed and then return them as soon as possible to the north. A night or two after they arrived, I didn't connect the experience with the heads until later. I woke up suddenly at about 2 a.m., deeply frightened and very cold. I looked towards the door, and by the corridor light glimpsed a tall figure slipping out of my room. My impression was that the figure was dark like a shadow, and that it was part animal and part man. I felt compelled to follow it, as if by some irresistible force. I heard it, whatever was it was, going downstairs, and then I saw it again, moving along the corridor that leads to the kitchen. But now I was too terrified to go on. I went back upstairs to the bedroom and woke Dick my husband. He searched the house, but found nothing, no sign at all of any disturbance. We thought that it must have had a nightmare. She must have had a nightmare. I must have had a nightmare. Though I could hardly believe it a nightmare, it seemed so real, and decided to say nothing about it. A few days later, when the house was empty, my teenage daughter Bernice came home from school at about 4 p.m., two hours before Dick and I returned from London. When we arrived home, she was deathly pale and clearly in a state of shock. She said that something horrible had happened, but at first would not say. But eventually, the story came out. When she had come in from school, the first thing she had seen was something huge, dark, and inhuman on the stairs. It had rushed down towards her, vaulted over the banisters, and landed in the corridor with a soft thud that made her think its feet were padded like those of an animal. It had run towards her room, and though terrified, she had felt that she had to follow it. At the door, it had vanished, leaving her in the state in which we found her. We calmed her down as best we could, 
and feeling puzzled and disturbed ourselves, searched the house. Again, there was no sign of any intruder, nor, in fact, did we expect to find any. There's a bit more to this story. There's another half, but I'll read it to you another week. Great to see you all, and catch you again next week. <laughs>